Let's hear from the Conservative MP for East Devon, Sir Hugo Swire, on this issue. Sir Hugo, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for your time this morning. You have spoken in the Commons about this. Uh, what do you think should be done? Well, I think two things. First of all, um, the Prime Minister has given Russia 24 hours, so that's until today, to make very clear either, and the questions are simple, did you lose control of this nerve agent or did you authorise it? And we need to know the answer to that. I don't, I'm not holding my breath. It's an answer will be uh, forthcoming. Um, but then it's a question of what we do subsequent to that. We're already talking to our international allies. Uh, Rex Tillerson, the American Secretary of State, has made a strong uh, statement in support, as have others, and ministers and officials will be busy contacting their opposite numbers uh, across Europe in particular to see if we can have a united response. I don't know if you watched the BBC News on television yesterday, but a BBC reporter faced Mr Putin yesterday and asked him directly, does Russia have any involvement? And, and he laughed it off and, and said, uh, Theresa May is running a, a puppet theatre. Where's so that effect on this issue? Well, I know, and I know there are accusations that this is all some dastardly UK plot. I, I think they've been reading um, too much John Le Carre. I don't think a British agents or the British state goes around using uh, this extraordinarily rare banned uh, chemical agent called Novichok um, on its own people in British market towns. It's just completely ridiculous. But my, my guess is this is a state-sponsored act. That's why I said in Parliament yesterday, if you've got one uh, member of the, the uh, Security Council at the UN, Russia, carrying out a targeted assassination uh, in the territory of another, the UK, then it's time for the UN Secretary General and others to get involved. But the, the really scary thing about this, Sir Hugo, is that that element, it, it, it was designed and made to seep through protective clothing to cause as much damage as possible. And uh, this was, uh, I think, was it the 70s? You'll know more than me uh, when, when this was uh, first trialled in Russia or, or the makings of. Well, it was designed, it's my understanding. I'm, I'm not an expert in this. It's, it, this banned chemical agent, this particular one, and there were quite a lot of of them under the headline of Novichok. It was designed to avoid detection. So this is the first time we've actually seen it used, which is why it was so difficult for the emergency services uh, to respond, I imagine. They didn't know what they were dealing with originally. May, may I put a point to you? I was in Salisbury on the day this happened, and uh, my, my, my daughter was in the same hospital uh, as, the, uh, as the Russian uh, former spy. And, uh, you know, I, I was down the road, 100, 200 yards from, from where this incident occurred. Um, but you, you must consider the residents of Salisbury who use the pub in question, use the ZZ restaurant and the walkway outside Sainsbury's that we've all seen on the news now. Why, Sir Hugo, did it take about five days for, for anyone that went into those establishments to be told to wash their mobile phones and jewellery, let alone their clothes? And also, why has it taken a week for us to see officials in protective gear fine tooth combing the area? That The response has been appallingly slow, hasn't it? No, I don't think that's true. I think the fact is this was we didn't know the nature of this attack. And were it not for the close proximity of the government's um, port and down installation, where they've obviously discovered what this uh, this chemical agent is, we would still probably be in the dark. So, of course, I'm sorry that you were in Salisbury on the day. I'm, well, as yeah, I, I said, I'm fine. Just, I, 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 was, I was away from it, so uh, I'm not sure, trying I to... I, yeah. I think it brings to our listeners, to your listeners this morning, you know, this is a an attack in the heart of the United Kingdom. And, of course, our thoughts go to Sergei Skubal and his daughter Julia, but also to Nick Bailey, the police officer, who I understand is getting better, but I think he's still in hospital uh, in Salisbury. But it does show... Now, how outrageous this act is, following on from a series of outrageous acts carried out by the Russian state, going back to the 2006 murder of Alexander Litvinenko, who you will remember was yes. poisoned uh, here in London, where I'm speaking from, uh, and a long catalogue of, of accusations against them, from the downing of MH17, which killed 200 people, the annexation of Crimea, their behaviour before that in Georgia, uh, in the Ukraine, their cyber attacks, their criminality, um, this is looking like the actions of it, what is increasingly uh, a kleptocracy, um, Putin enriching himself with his cronies, um, carrying out uh, targeted attacks on those who have spoken out against him. My final point to you, if I may, this morning, Sir Hugo, if, if the Russians do not respond uh, with uh, the answer that Theresa May has asked for, with that deadline she's imposed of, of today, what would happen? What could our Prime Minister do? Because... 
the, the talk of sanctions that I've heard, frankly, Russia would laugh them off, wouldn't they? No, they wouldn't. It's the one thing that certainly some of the oligarchs are extraordinarily sensitive about is being prevented from travelling, having assets frozen and seized. And that's why we need to get on with what's called the, uh, the Magnitsky Act, uh, which is, um, and then now it comes down to an issue of the review mechanism. But I think that will now go quite uh, through quite quickly. Then there's an issue of other sanctions, whether we can do that in conjunction with uh, the rest of the uh, EU. Uh, there's, of course, the United States and a NATO response and whether or not we increase on uh, the deployment of uh, NATO. We've already got what's called the enhanced forward presence in the Balkan states. That's some more NATO troops in the Balkan states because the Russians have been uh, threatening those states as well. This, this is very serious. And, of course, it's not completely unconnected to the fact that in a matter of uh, days now, really, uh, President Putin faces a, an election in which he will be re-elected. Mm. Um, but I think now he has brought attention on himself in a way that perhaps is, is long overdue. It is really serious, which I'm why I'm sure uh, our listeners appreciate your time this morning, Sir Hugo. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure.